Well, you may have heard I have been officially canceled. Uh, so recently, uh, Matt Walsh on his show uh, has a segment. I guess he has a segment regularly on his daily show where he uh, cancels people. And uh, I was on the chopping block uh, that day, just a couple days ago after I am recording the before I'm recording this, uh, and uh, I have been canceled. Uh, and the reason I have been canceled is because of my comments on the film. Now, if you haven't watched Matt Walsh's comments from his show on this, uh, on myself, uh, <laughs> the segment is called Jordan Cooper is Canceled. So I'll, I'll post a link below. It's like, like the 45 minute mark or so uh, when he starts talking about me. And um, also, if you haven't watched the video that he's responding to, which was uh, some comments on his movie, I'll also link that below. I would urge you to actually watch the whole video uh, because I don't know that he had watched the whole video. So if you uh, if, if you watch the clip, uh, basically, you know, the, the reason that I am canceled is because of my um, negative comments toward toward the film, the documentary film, What is a Woman? Now, um, I wrote down some quotes from there that I want to talk about quickly, uh, and I don't want this to be too long, but I figured I might as well say something about this since uh, I'm getting a million messages about it. Um, but first of all, if you watch, if you actually watch my my review of, of the movie, uh, it's it's pretty brief. And for the most part, I said, I think it, I, I, my comments were very positive. I've recommended the movie to others. Um, I think that for the most part, it, it does a really good job at exposing uh, those who promote a radical gender ideology uh, by allowing them to use their own words and to just ask them some very basic fundamental questions. And I think it, it does a good job at demonstrating that um, there are just some primary basic questions that really cannot be answered. There's a lot of inconsistency uh, among those who are promoting radical gender ideology. And so I think it worked pretty well. Um, the one comment that I made, which was which was taken as the uh, foundation for my uh, cancellation, was that uh, I, I said, in some ways, I wish that the documentary hadn't been made by uh, by Matt Walsh and produced by The Daily Wire. Now, if you watch the video, and, and I thought I was clear about this, but perhaps I, I wasn't, but um, what I had said in the video really was not that I you know didn't like Daily Wire, I don't like Matt Walsh, I don't like any of the work they do. That, that simply was not true. Uh, I think the quote was that... Uh, I don't, uh, Jordan Cooper, uh, quote, doesn't like or doesn't respect me or the Daily Wire. And that's just not true. Uh, th that was never my intention at all. Uh, the, the point that I was making is clearly the Daily Wire is, a, it's a conservative organization and it's a politically active organization. I mean, they, you know, for example, just uh, prior to the clip where he talks about about me, um, he talks about you know giving out mugs that say uh, "liberal tears" on them. Now, like like clearly, it's a provocative uh, kind of message that you're giving out about about liberals and that you are a conservative organization, and like that's that's fine. But my point is just because of the image that the Daily Wire has. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing that they are bold about what they believe. I think that's actually a very good thing. But it is, in some context, going to mean that some people aren't going to watch the film because of that. Uh, and particularly, you know, in, in my context, uh, in my for those of you who aren't familiar with, with everything that I do, I work for a theological seminary. I'm the president of a theological seminary. I also have this uh, a number of writing projects. I have this uh, YouTube channel. I have a podcast. I'm also involved in campus ministry at Cornell University, so uh, that means that I am actively involved in uh, mentoring um, Ivy League students. Uh, that's that's very much my my context. And from a and I'll tell you from speaking with professors, uh, Ivy League professors, uh, and those who are students, there are a number of people that have serious concerns about this gender ideology that's being pushed on university campuses and everywhere else. And there are a lot of people that won't speak up. I've had a lot of conversations with people that won't say anything publicly. They have to hide what they're really thinking about these issues, but that they're really trying to think through a lot of this. And the fact that the Daily Wire is name is on there is going to stop a certain crowd of people who are kind of on the edge trying to figure this out, who consider themselves more kind of what liberals were 20 years ago, <laughs> uh, rather than what uh, what liberals are are today. So my, my complaint wasn't, they should have done this film. I think it's bad. 
I don't like the Daily Wire. None of that's true at all. It didn't turn me off from it in any way. Uh, my own political views tend to be uh, certainly more more conservative, so I don't have an issue with that. It's more in my context. These are the things that I'm thinking through as I'm thinking through uh, a film is what is what impact is this going to have? How can I use this movie? And particularly when I am, you know, doing things in, say, a ministry context, uh, when you're talking about, you know, can I show this to a church? Well, it automatically gets, well, this is this group and they believe this and that, and you've got all of this other stuff that's tied to it. Now, I don't think it's it's a good thing that we in our culture can't separate one idea from another. I don't think it's a good thing that we lump everybody together and say, well, this is the group that believes this about whatever it might be. And I mentioned, you know, vaccines or whatever. And to say, well, I don't agree with them about this, so therefore I can't listen to them. And I think that's, that's a problem with our culture. Like, it, it's not good that we do that, but it is the reality. The only comments I was really making were, it does limit who will watch the movie. That's it. I wasn't saying it was bad. I never said it was a bad movie. I didn't like Matt Walsh. I don't like The Daily Wire. Just none of that is true. And those who know me know that none of that is true. Uh, Oh, well. Uh, okay, so I wanted to respond to, to some, some different comments that were made uh, as well throughout this because Matt Walsh kind of used this as a kind of a, a starting point to then talk about what he doesn't like about what certain churches are doing and pastors are doing and how they've responded to, say, the work of the Daily Wire or um, his work in particular. And I was the jumping off point here, and he does go back to my name quite a few times. So I, I, I think in light of those comments, I think it's fair to say that I I should be able to defend, you know, myself in light of some of the comments about me or were implicating me seemingly um, here. So uh, one of the things is, you know, Matt Walsh says that, you know, people like me uh, don't like that The Daily Wire is doing this uh, and we wish there were more intelligent people. He's too brash. He's not intelligent enough to be doing this thing, these kinds of things. He's not educated enough is if we're looking down on people that don't have, you know, PhDs, uh, and that if you don't have a PhD, you have nothing to say on these issues. I think that, that's not true. That's never a claim that I've made. Uh, that's never a claim that I have in any way ever tried to make. Um, I, I think we recognize as we're facing um, issues, whether it's gender issues or anything else, we, we have to recognize various people's callings and giftings, and those giftings are different. So there are going to be people with different personalities that are more brash. There are going to be people that deal more with academic high level academic uh, ideas and there are going to be people who are more kind of boots on the ground with 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 activism and this or that but there are also theological callings or political callings there are all sorts of callings nothing i've ever said was to implicate somebody as uh, somehow not being a good person to be active in these issues i'm just saying that it limits the audience to a particular group just like my audience is also limited to people who are probably more academically minded because that's the nature of what I do. That's okay. All right. Um, you know, Matt Walsh then then says uh, there's especially aren't many Christian leaders that are getting to the front. And so he, he talks about how like, you know, people like me just sit back and talk and that's all we do is talk. And he goes on to say that uh, we, we just talk and we don't actually do any action and people like him are getting to you know, the front and getting in the midst of, of all of these battles and we're not doing anything. And, and those of you who watch me or listen to my podcast, just first of all, you know, that's not true because you know what I do. Um, many who don't know me have been commenting on my videos, <laughs> assuming they know all sorts of things about what I do and, and don't do. Um, but I am, I, I, I don't know how this isn't the front lines. I'm, I'm telling you I'm active in, you know, an Ivy League school helping to mentor students and working with students to retain uh, basic orthodoxy, uh, which certainly includes um, issues of gender. I have spent hours upon hours reading, you know, Judith Butler and Simone de Beauvoir and doing all of this difficult academic work. I mean, the most recent thing that I have been spending uh, a, a large portion of my time doing is reading a lot of Marxist, neo Marxist, and post Marxist academic works. And that's work that needs to be done. I, I don't know how this isn't not the frontline work. I don't know how you um, can say that those who are in academic fields who are actually putting in the work to read the sources that lead to where we are today, how that isn't somehow not really doing anything active. I'm just sitting back and, and talking and not, not doing anything at all. Um, 
the, the reality is this, and I think there maybe is a different view of, of cultural change and cultural interaction that, that we see with, with Matt Walsh here and myself. Uh, and that is that you can watch series I've done on this, which is uh, how to change culture. I've, I've looked at uh, James Davidson Hunter's proposal. And, and I think James Davidson Hunter has a lot of really good points in that um, he discusses how when you look at various changes, whether it's early Christianity and the impact upon the Roman Empire uh, or the Protestant Reformation as another example. I know Matt Walsh is a Catholic, probably doesn't think that's a particularly good thing. But, uh, but if you look at these examples of massive cultural changes, it largely is something that occurs from the top down. That doesn't mean that's all it is. But... And you see this with progressivism today. Why is the radical progressivism, why are these ideas just so popular in our culture, in our media? It all started with the academy, with the world of ideas. So when you're dealing with uh, issues of, of cultural change and you're dealing with issues of, of broad ideological change, a lot of times this really does start in the academy. It starts in the university. And that means that if you're going to have impact, right? broad impact, you need to have people in the academy doing doing this work. You need to have people reading the really annoying, obnoxious academic sources and giving a critique of them, giving a robust philosophical, uh, theological, psychological, literary critique. That's what you need to have. And, and we, we've seen a broad impact from from academics on the right. I mean, look at somebody like, a, you know, a, a Roger Scruton or a Robert George. You know, these are these are figures who really have profoundly shaped my work, who I, I uh, try to emulate in, in what I do. And they have a, a very broad impact. So uh, just to say that because I'm an academic and because I write books or because I do you know more academic podcasts? That means I'm not on the front lines. It's just not true. It's just not true. Um, and and people who know me and know my work know that that's not the case. Um, so uh, I will say this though. Uh, Matt Walsh says you're not on the front, but he says, but we would love to have you. And he's talking about me here. He does invite others as well. And he said we would invite you. We invite you all to come. Uh, and he says this a couple different times. And he says this in uh, the podcast on the following day where he follows up on some of this. He doesn't mention me by name in that second one. But I'll say, okay, I'll take you up on your invitation. Let's see how serious you are. If you mean it, sure. Let's have, have me on the podcast. Let's talk. If you really want people like me uh, on the front, uh, and then come on, let's do it. I'm, I'm taking you at your word and say, you want me to come? All right. Let's have a conversation. And that is what I would, I would much rather do that than go back and forth uh, with this kind of stuff. Um, why don't we talk? Why don't we talk? So there's my, there's my invitation. I'm really accepting an invitation because he said it first. <laughs> and I want to know if he really meant it or if he, or if he didn't mean it. Um, so I, I've got a bunch of other, you know, quotes here from, uh, from Matt. And there are things that uh, we could say that I could say in response to a lot of those things. But, uh, you know, if you heard this and you're one of those people who's just now commenting on random videos in the past, um, accusing me of all sorts of weird things because you've never actually listened to anything I've ever had to say, um, <laughs> I would urge you to actually go through and, like, look at what I've done and, and what I've said. Uh, and I would urge you to actually watch the video that was had a little bit of a clip taken out of it um, that's... Uh, was out of context, and I think that you see that some of the criticisms that Matt Walsh makes are things that I actually said later in the video if you'd watched the whole video. So anyway, that's all. Those are my basic thoughts. We'll see if the invitation is is for real. Uh, I'm ready and willing. We'll see. Thanks so much, and uh, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one. God bless.